Hello, everyone. It's Pam Esquire, also known as Your Law Intellect. I'm trying not to be loud because I'm like in the lobby. Hopefully you don't hear all this music. How is everyone doing this evening? I actually planned on going a little bit later, but um, so that I don't uh, go to sleep, I figured I'll go now because we have a lot to discuss. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to the replay. Welcome to all the new subscribers. We are growing by the day. Hey, Shelly. Hey, Fred. HFG. Hey, Ben Childs. Hey, thank you guys again for the birthday blessings. You guys have flooded me with so much love, and I so appreciate it. Hi, Peaches Royale. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yes. So we have a few things that we're going to discuss. Of course, the grand finale is probably going to be these documents on Whitehead. But there was a few things legally that were in the news today that I wanted to discuss first. So I'm going to hop right into it. So many people are probably going to have to catch the replay, which is fine. It's fine. They just won't be able to participate in our live chats. So. This music is something else. So we're going to. Let's, let's lower him a little bit. So many of us know who this is. This is Bishop-elect Marvin Wyman. So he's been in the news lately for his property that he's been building in the city of Detroit for the last 20 years. And now they're talking about, you know, the, the city intervening in um, some type of legal action, I guess, if he doesn't do something with the eyesore over there. But many of you guys have also seen there were three, I think it was three rappers that were recently um, unalive. You guys know what I'm saying. I'm not going to say the word. In the city of Detroit, they were missing, but they were find, found in Highland Park because you guys know that the bishop is from Detroit or lives in Detroit. And so I was looking at the article about the three men that were found um, in Highland Park on a lie. And they mentioned the case with Marvin Wine. And so for those that don't know, in about 2012, Marvin Winans, let's see. Let me refresh your recollection for those that don't know what I'm talking about. Marvin Winans was carjacked in 2012, right? This is one of the articles that came out. Detroit police on the scene at the Sitco gas station on Linwood at Davidson, which is the hood, said that the incident happened at around 3.30. Police said the men beat Winans up before taking his Rolex watch and about $200 in cash. They then talk, took off in Winans' luxury SUV. Winans described the attack as quite savage, but said he wasn't seriously injured. He said, this kind of nonsense just has to stop. And then it talks about how he's a well-known as a member of the legendary gospel group and a pastor of the 4,500 member perfecting church on Detroit's east side. And he gained national notoriety when he gave singer Whitney Houston's eulogy in February. I don't know. I thought he already had national notoriety during then, but maybe not. He has also been very active in civic issues, including the stand against the proliferation of strip clubs in Detroit. Police said that there was no gun used in the assault. There is no surveillance tape of the incident. Police were looking for help in locating the stolen Burgundy Infinity QX56 SUV. So they were asking for anyone with information, right? That's just to refresh your recollection. So what does this have to do with the three men? So the family of the three men that they found in Highland Park, they were complaining about how they felt that they weren't getting any information, that they weren't getting information regarding their family member being found unalive, right? So, so one of the people that, so this is what I'm talking about as far as the three people that were found. So the mother of one of the three rappers who were found in an abandoned Highland Park apartment complex says they've been kept in the dark about the investigation, including why her son was targeted. 
Montoya Gibbons was one of the three men who were all together for a cancel rap performance and then they disappeared. They were all found late last week, 12 days after they were last heard from. Gibbons' mother, Katina Fogel, spoke with Fox 2 on the phone on Monday. She said she was she was too nervous to walk anywhere via a video chat because she doesn't know why her 31-year-old son was on a lie. So she basically saying she ain't want her face on there because she don't know what was the motive. So y'all not, you know, I got to keep myself safe. So then it mentioned, she said he has just gotten out of prison for carjacking and robbing well-known Detroit pastor Marvin Winans in 2012. She said her son did her time and was finally free. I feel numb right now, she said. 10 years of my son's life was taken away from me, and then I get him back for 10 months, and now he's on the lot. How am I supposed to feel? Givens met the other two victims, Armani Kelly and Dante Wicker, in prison. The trio were all aspiring rappers, and Fogel says she was just getting to know her son again as he was getting a fresh start. He's very joking. He's a very jokingly fun guy. He's one of those funny people but he's not aggressive, she said. The trio were missing for two weeks after last being seen in January on the way to a gig at Lounge 31 on Detroit East, Detroit's east side. They never performed, though, as it was canceled last minute. Um, they were discovered last week under debris in the basement at an abandoned apartment building in HP. As far as who did this to them, police have been very tight-lipped. A 15-year-old boy has been charged after getting caught with Armani Kelly's car and warrant. Sources tell Fox 2 that an HP man was arrested in Knoxville on separate charges, but is wanted for questioning in this situation. What I say is you reap what you sow. What goes around comes around. Fogel said at some point what you did will eat at you. Michigan State Police are heading up the investigation and have not indicated anything on motive here. They said the investigation is heading in the right direction. Right. Did y'all see that? What? So he just got, see, we, we heard about, see, I think we took our eyes off of the whole Marvel. It happened 10 years ago, as you see. But we kind of took our eyes off of that because we were just like, what you doing pumping gas on Linwood and Davidson? I think we were more focused on the area a lot of time. A lot of us were. But we never really followed up on what the punishment was and who the people were. So apparently, as you see, one of the people that were allegedly involved in this obviously was convicted. And he did. He did 10 years. He literally just got out. And then I guess he became a rapper while he was in prison and he got out and ended up in Highland Park. I was like, what's in the world? Yeah, it's just, no, I'm not trying to say Marv had that, that Bishop Black had anything to do with it. I just, you know, that was the connection that they put in there in that article. And I didn't know that because I didn't, I've seen a lot of people covering this, but usually I would like cover it once they find out who did it and we go over. So we'll definitely follow this story. Another story that um, that I was looking at today that many of you probably saw as well were the Memphis officers, how they texted a photo of Tyree Nichols after the beating. Now we know Tyree Nichols is the young man that was beaten mercifulness by the police, like a savage. I mean, it was, it was crazy. I only watch a good 15 minutes. That was it. I couldn't watch anymore. But according to this article, let me see. According to this article, uh, and I'll get back. I, I must check your, I'm trying to get through because it's kind of, it's people out here and then it's the music. Because, you know, you guys treated me so well, I was able to stay, you know, on vacation for a couple of more days. So I'm still at the hotel. So. So it has in the article, as Tyree Nichols sat propped up against a police car, bloody days and handcuffed after being beaten by a group of Memphis police officers, one of those officers took a picture of him and sent it to at least five people 
The Memphis Police Department said in a document released by the state on Tuesday, the document was sent to the Tennessee Peace Officer Standard and Training Commission as part of a request last month for the regulatory agency to decertify five officers involved in the beating. Those officers have since been fired and charged with second degree murder in Mr. Nichols' death. The decertification, which was requested by the Chief Davis of the Memphis Police, would make the fired officers ineligible to work as police officers in the state. In the newly released document, police officers said that one of the five officers, Demetrius Haley, admitted to sending a photograph of Mr. Nichols to at least five people, including two fellow officers, a civilian employee of the department, and a female acquaintance. A sixth person also re received the photo of the record state. Michael Stenjo, a lawyer of Mr. Haley, did not immediately respond to the messages seeking comment. I'm sure he didn't. Videos of the beating that were released by the city last month appear to show Mr. Haley taking pictures of Mr. Nichols a few minutes after the beating when the police officers had propped him up against a police car. The videos show Mr. Haley shining a flashlight on Mr. Nichols and appearing to take a photograph with his phone. He then looks briefly at his phone and a few seconds later appears to take another photo. Memphis Police Department policy prohibits officers from using personal cell phones while performing, pat performing patrol duties, such as driving a police vehicle, handling calls for service or conducting traffic stops. The department letter that Mr. Haley had used a personal cell phone. Let me see. This is crazy. So this is showing him Look at that. You can literally see on here where it appears that he is taking pictures. This is crazy. So that actually came out today. We heard a lot of rumors about pictures being taken, but this is the first time we've actually seen video and we've seen, um, we've seen uh, photos, you know, that they've shown that this actually occurred. And so the other thing that I was going to talk about today, and if it gets too loud, I might have to end the live because now people came out here and they're talking. So Jesus help me. Okay, so I talked, I um I watched and I I watched the trial, the streaming live of XXX Tentacion. I didn't know who they were, just like I didn't know who Tory Lanez was. Didn't know any of that. But I watched that trial today. Today was opening statements. Well, opening arguments, I guess you could say. I say statements because they're but um, today was the opening and they also had, a, they got to two witnesses. One was the lady that was at a bank and it was also a guy as well. Okay, this is too loud out here. All right, so I'm going to have to come back, guys, and then we'll talk about it. I'm going to come back in a few minutes. I'm going to have to go back in the room because these people are super loud and it feels like it's on purpose. So instead of me getting an attitude, I'm just going to leave and I'm going to go ahead. And I'm going to go in the room. So I'll be right back. You guys just stand by and I'll come right back on. 